please welcome my friend Chelsea Clinton. My children are large, Drew. And you have two boys. I do, and my two and a half year old's a giant. Okay, so the last time you came here was like the morning after the insurrection? It was the morning after the insurrection. And here we are uh, in the middle of a new war. And how do we persevere? How do we go about our days when such difficult things are happening Oh gosh, Drew, well, there, there is a lot um, happening. I mean, here in our city of New York, across our country, and certainly around the world, um, we see the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, although we know that Ukraine isn't the only country in the world that is under kind of war and violence and kind of threat from outside or inside. Um, and I think either we can drown in the despair, or we can decide to try to do something about it. And I think there is a lot that we can do. I mean, for those of us with resources, we can donate to the International Rescue Committee and so many of the amazing organizations who are on the front lines trying to give people food and medical support and hope. We can put continued pressure kind of, especially for those of us who live in democracies to have a unified effort to stand up to Putin and all of his brutality. Um, because I think ultimately, Drew, optimism is a moral choice. And I think it is the more moral choice to choose to be optimistic, to choose to believe that our efforts and our energies can make a difference. Because otherwise, we just all like put our covers over our heads. And I don't think that's going to make us feel very good, right? I think that's then just ceding to hopelessness. I would much rather try to act hopeful and try to create more hope in the world so that that happiness you talk about is hard won because we know we have all tried to do our part. And you just did it. You just did it. I always love that you and I also, I, and I cannot hold a candle to your experience growing up in front of everybody. I, I just, I love asking you life advice because you are very full of grace and I don't know, how do you do it? How, how do you remain this full of grace while the world is difficult, while people are divided or different? What's your one foot in front of the other? Well, I think being myself, somewhat stubbornly, um, I'm terrible at being other people, but I just, I'm not an actress. I don't have those genes like you do. And I can't do it in real life. I can't fake anything. I can't fake anything. And, and yet then I do know I have to um, take care of myself so that I can hopefully take care of others. The others in kind of the smaller world of my family and the others in the, in the bigger sense of the work that I feel called to do, whether as, a, as an author or an advocate. So I spend a lot of time with my kids because they just bring me so much joy. And I spend a lot of time running because <laughs> I find running is like my meditative space. Um, and I'm also, I'm quite religious and I was able to finally go back in person to church a few weeks ago, which meant a huge amount to me to be able to be kind of in the sanctuary it was a very different experience than live stream. Although like God bless my minister for just never giving up on those of us on the other side of the screen who she couldn't see or kind of be with in in kind of physical community. And so all of that really matters to me and is then how I try to help remind myself that I do matter so then I can try to do more work that I hope creates more, more possibility for more people in more places. And you do. Church, running, stubbornly being yourself. All three of those things seem doable, attainable, admirable. When you move your body, you do shift your chemistry.